Volkov took took over. Do you right. remember there was this air that you know there's always secret police watching you. There's mm -hmm. your neighbor can be spying on you. That that sort of like a yep. very tense atmosphere that we used to associate with lands far far away. Mm -hmm. And that's the atmosphere I'm getting from Pakistan. Pakistan, which is a very wow. weird thing to feel. It's a very weird thing to feel. Unfortunately, uh, I think, depending what happens in November, we may have that here. I, you know what? The cynic in me, and I'm uh, I'm maturing into a, a, a real cynic. You know what? It doesn't matter who wins. Right. There are always forces at play that are there to keep all of us normals in place and and harvest our money data <laughs> harvest our intelligence right there is a grand mechanism now who's at I the understand. Of that? yeah i understand i think democracy i mean that's the, the big play like I, I listen to trump's speeches i watched them at the uh economic forum in chicago and i was like wow i mean like neither hear camilla say anything that's the problem like you know all he talks about is the border and immigrants and they're eating dogs and i'm like that's great what are you do for the economy and he's like we're going to bring people back to america you're not really going to if i'm a big company you know america's good but i can go elsewhere and the other thing which he keeps saying is america's done terrible the stock market is at an all-time record high the last three years you mr trump you're not president during those three years that's the democrats um, that's also because America, with or without Mr. Trump, is a great country regardless. We have technology. We have AI. We have like a list goes on and on. And we have people that have this can-do attitude. So when he says, make America, America's already great. We were never not great after World War II. What you want to do is you want to make it into your own likeness type of thing. That's why he's doing this thing with Elon and whatever. And granted, Mr. Musk has done some cool things, but I don't think they're going to make America great. I think they're going to make it restrictive to them or for what they want. And I think in, that's where the issue is. In, in recent history, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the 80s, I always refer to the 80s, uh, very from a personal nostalgia uh, point of view, great music. Yep. Relative world security. The Cold War meant that there was a face off that no one was going to go anywhere. You know what I mean? Right. Um, if anyone ever hijacked a plane, it would be held for 10 days and released. Mm. There was nothing. Right. There was nothing in the 80s that was way out there, even like yeah. in the UK, when the IRA would plant a bomb in London, they would call right. the police, tell them where the bomb was, <laughs> ask everyone to evacuate. Right, and it right. was to cause disruption. I mean, that's the world I lived in. Yeah. And I was talking about this with a friend of mine, I think a couple of days ago. And he said, well, the commonality is that the uh, that America was perceivably and perhaps rationally the most powerful nation on the planet. And right. there was a real superpower that dominated and perhaps world security. I mean, it, it's, it's very counterintuitive, but that was actually world security. No one yeah. really wanted to move their butt cheeks in any particular direction, right. if you know what I mean. Yep. And um, so when you talk about, when, when Trump is talking about making America great again, I don't know if he actually means it. I don't know if these are, these are uh, slogans, strategic words. Right. I don't know. I, I'm sure they're popular words. Right. Hello, but gentlemen. It's all about, hello, hello, hello. hello. We were, we were just talking politics, but because you live in um, on Pluto, we won't do that anymore. We're going to only talk about cigars, so the government <laughs> won't censor you. And we just want to say to your government, um, anytime that you want to uh, import a bunch of Cuban cigars and have me test them, please feel free. Um, and now that our, our Samone is here, we can start the show officially. Yes. This is 2OF Entertainment. The Habanos Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment, with over 100,000 YouTube subscribers and rapidly growing to be the most watched and podcast cigar show broadcast globally. The Habanos Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment. Hey, 
Osmin, the cigar guys are here. Yeah. By the way, I want to thank Osmin. Osmin invited me to a uh, a private cigar Zoom function, and I must tell you that I've I learned so much um, that now I have to send my private jet to go pick up my cigars elsewhere because I'm afraid to have them shipped in. So there you go. So, <laughs> that's that's that number one and number two. I would just like to thank the uh, Casino Royale uh, for sponsoring <laughs> today's show and my Scotch, as you can tell. We have that just left. Moonlight. You literally okay. just left. I just left. I literally did. Yes, as you can tell, I've left, and I'm here to do this cigar show. So here you go. Now, so there we have it, gentlemen. It's I'm good to see you. On, on the get off, I'm going to yeah. shock Usman with what I'm smoking. Okay. You 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 can shock me at any point in time. It's it's not about only the guy who's smoking. <laughs> I am smoking literally the butt end of the cigar I was smoking last night. I thought I would light up because this is my oh, favorite no part. Idea how many, I, mean, I don't know how many times I need to remind you. That's not, That's not my me. favorite activity. Smoking a cigar, sort of halfway, two-thirds of the way through, leaving it, and then carrying on next morning. I if I show you the to... band, if I show you the band on this cigar, I'm you're going to be a little bit surprised. Are you ready? I thought he just liked smoking the butt end of things. But anyway, hey, what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, number well, two. I'm... Yeah, I kind of saw it close up. There you go. That's a good cigar. I've had that. It's it's a very good cigar. Absolutely. Yes, it is. It's very good. Very nice. I wasn't sure if he was giving us the finger there at first. So, well, gentlemen, welcome. This is a great set. Well, for me, a Saturday morning. For yes, I love you too, honey. Um, so, <laughs> um, this is a great Saturday morning. It's for me. For you, gentlemen, it's afternoon and evening. So, well, um, yes, my evening has just gotten better. I am like well, the right end of time when I need to just get into my cigars and enjoy the rest of my evening. The only thing is I, 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 you guys have started to make me get dressed a bit, dressed up a bit more, which is okay and I like it. So, What are you smoking? The only, the only, the only question is why aren't you... Oh, oh, well, yeah, well, actually, sorry, my bad. Raza is way more appropriately dressed, so I can't say anything yeah. and complain. <laughs> yes, for a change. I, for a change. I, for a change, yes, 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 I am smoking in Apico number two. The Very nice. yeah, the 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 what you say, all time no miss kind of cigar. But yeah, that's what I'm smoking. And I'm I stick with uh, today. I'm just pulled out my religious CAO Brazilian, oh, Brazilian. <laughs> non Cuban because you know it's a five dollar stick and it's, it smokes just as good as your fancy schmancy Cubans over there. Um, and we have a, a, a question for um, I think Riza and uh, Osman. Riza, you yeah. told about the cigar you're smoking. Really? It says, Do you think number two is better than an A? I always make a number two and I think that's wonderful, but uh, is it better than an A? So, well, I'm gonna say something that. Do we have? Oh, no one's really yeah. like. I'm not. We have, we have, we have, I'm, we have not, I'm not such a fan of H. Upman. Oh really? Okay. I'm not such a fan. No. I'm not such a fan. Oh. I'm not such a fan. But mm -hmm. on the advice of Usman and Christian at Tom Tom, of course, I have been smoking a few more, and also uh, Mustafa. Actually, I, I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to Mustafa have been smoking more Upmans to see where this little journey takes me. I have okay. okay, and let me correct that. When I say I'm not a fan, I haven't been a fan. I'm a little bit warming up to this brand. And the reason why I didn't really ever enjoy, enjoy H. Upmans generally is because I had a spate of bad experiences with them maybe about 10, 12 years ago. I used to sit in a lounge and sort of smoke my way through the boxes and right. i think maybe sometimes that, that will happen to you you smoke three or four bad cigars in a row and that and mm -hmm. that kind of puts you off for a little while right. and as usman knows one of the ways that i and i've done this for quite a long time if i really want to get to know a brand or get to know a specific vitola i smoke three four five of them i i, I don't I don't leave it to chance. I will smoke it again and again okay. and again. So just in, on that note, I thought, you know, I've had, I smoked four or five bad uh, Upmans. I'm, I'm just going to leave this, this uh, brand alone for a while. And that's gotcha. why I never really warmed up to it. I don't know about Usman's, uh, Usman, Usman swears by it. A lot of people swear, like, swear okay. by them. But... So for me, Age Upmans are like kind of my go-to brand. I, I really like uh, Age Upmans. Uh, H. Upman, Soyo Di Montere, Kiri. Um, these are, these are like my one of my favorite brands, but um, in, in it's in um, 
when we're talking about H. Upmans and specifically to Saad's uh, question where he says, do you think number two is better than A? Now, first for the clarity, uh, there is an H. Upman number two and then there is an H. Upman canister number two. Right, that's so right. that's what I spoke yesterday. So I'm 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 going to assume for this discussion that we are referring to connoisseur number two because the A is only in connoisseur, so connoisseur A and connoisseur B, and connoisseur number one, and connoisseur number two. And what's so, the difference between the connoisseurs and non connoisseurs? No, it's just just about four dollars. Different Vitola, different Vitola and Habano specialist editions. So these are these are and the different blend and different blend as well, right? Well, within the same brand, yes. The the main brand is the same. However, these are the Habano Specialist Editions. Hence, uh, they are different uh, as compared to the regular production lines, which is the number two. So amongst these, uh, I always have felt that number two uh, is better than number one, which means connoisseur number two is better than connoisseur number one. And amongst the connoisseur A and connoisseur B, I've always found connoisseur B much better than connoisseur A. It might just be my personal preference, but I feel number two and connoisseur B are more wholesome and uh, more flavorful, uh, despite the fact that they are slightly thin, thicker on the ringgit side. Yet I feel they are they're much better as compared to the other ones. Now, when you say connoisseur A, does that mean A grade and B grade, or is it no, A the first one that came or the Okay, so these, these are the names and these are uh, the Vitola names for them. Uh, they were released at different times, hence the Connoisseur 1 and 2 range and then the Connoisseur A and Connoisseur B range. Uh, Connoisseur A and B are the Habano Specialist Editions, hence they were a special release primarily for the La Casa de Habanos and Habano Specialists only across the world. Uh, whereas the Connoisseur number 1 and Connoisseur number 2 are regular production cigars. Interesting. And the other thing that we discussed on the on the private Zoom thing, we were talking about jars. And these guys were pulling out jars from like 1996. This one guy, and I don't want to mention his name or where he lives, but we have his address. Anyway, um, he has a cabinet <laughs> full of like everything collectible. When you were saying you should collect for your son or you should just start collecting. This guy's been collecting, if I'm not mistaken, since he's in the 90s. Um, yeah. And he was pulling out boxes that would like make your grandfather cry. I'm just like, <laughs> wow. Like I've, like I've smoked those back in the day, but he would, apparently he buys like, you know, container fulls and he keeps a couple really? boxes and it, and he was just pulling out things out of, I was like, wow, this, he's a connoisseur. He was Absolutely. like, he's a collector. Brother, you, you actually missed that, uh, herf this time. Which herf was this? The cigar keeper. It was. Yes, I, I, I was probably at odds and ends as I have been, as you know. Yes, the last yes, sir. Uh, no, no. no I, the, I, you know, you, you three, know. Four, you five, know in in today's uh, discussion, it is three, four, five, six weeks. Uh, Stephen, I'm sure you understood what I am trying to say. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I know, we we got it. So you know, the fans get it too. Listen, listen, so, listen, 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 but hey, listen, listen, the good thing is, listen, is listen, that. Listen, 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 listen. Oh, here we go. Here we go. He's yeah, gonna now, now I'm gonna clarify. I was gonna clarify. When you take when you take a band off. When, when you take a band there aid off, go. it's better to go. very slowly so you don't pull the skin up. No, no, no. no. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I, I take it, you know what? I, I, I take it, I take it, you know what? I take it in the nicest way. I take we, it, we love nice, you. I take yes. it in we, the nicest way. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, would it be that that people are longing to see you? And that longing is a beautiful thing. My God, people have been longing to see you for years now. Here I am. So, here I am. Here I am. <laughs> He's here every Saturday. Here he is. You can find him every yeah. Saturday if you need to find him. He's right here. So, but um, no, but I mean, I, I don't thought miss it was a show. Fun. I don't miss a show. That very well. We, we've oh, we've adjusted yeah. it, so you, oh, yeah. we've adjusted it, so you don't miss the show. <laughs> we made sure that now you don't miss the show. So, because of where certain um, hosts are. We've decided that we really can't talk politics. So we'll talk about other things because we don't want to get anybody in trouble. Before you came on, we were discussing the U.S. election. So we don't want to piss anybody off the UFO gods. So we'll... Uh, we'll <laughs> no, we'll just... I, have, I, have, I have tried that the, I, I am in a zone where the UFOs don't fly today. And I okay. made sure that I uh, almost spent an hour fixing anything and everything in terms yeah, your, of reception, your reception your reception looks much much better i know today. Mike you've got a very is, clear picture yeah 
Um, uh, I, there yes, is no problems yes. whatsoever. There is no yes, glitches. They... There's nothing. There's no Wi-Fi loss. It's a very clear picture. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yesterday, I, I, I purchased two new routers, got wow. new wireless ca uh, cables, and I have plugged connection today just to ensure that the UFOs do not disrupt my Wi-Fi. Right. I am on the wire I, I, like the old, like the good old days. Hence, everything is sorted. And there's, a suggestion, there's a suggestion to protect you from the UFOs. I saw this mm. in a movie called Signs. If you wear aluminium <laughs> foil cones on your head, on your head yeah, that'll do it. It, oh, it disperses yeah. the vibrations. Yeah. Reza, Reza you, you surely want to get me banned. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly, that's exactly what we were talking about. Stephen and yeah. I were talking about this, that I didn't expect the sensitivities of politics from the 1980s to filter into modern day. And uh, so that's what we we're talking about. And that's where we disposed it. That's why we're not going to talk. Right. Um, uh, if we were to talk politics, Mr. Trump. Uh, here we go. If we were well, to talk politics, we'd talk about politics in other places. Right. Fair enough. Right, because we don't want to get we don't want the UFO guys to get upset. So, so can I ask, can I pose a question? Can I pose a question? This is a question yeah. I posed to Christian yesterday, and I put it up on sure. my story. I posed several questions, but there's the one that I thought was most interesting. I was comparing um, Habanos cigars. We were having this sort of uh, analogy between cigar cigars and cars, for example, okay. right? And we've referenced this before. And I said, look, I think of Habanos as the sort of the Ferraris of the cigar world. You know, uh, they have their issues, but they're beautiful cigars and they smoke well. It's a greater right. experience. And we came onto the question of the Ferrari F40 versus the F50, especially since they lost, launched the F80 yeah. two days ago. So, gentlemen... This is this apparently well. This for me is called a Reza test. It tells me a lot about your personalities. F forty or F fifty. Stephen, go. F forty. That's that, that was a no brainer, by the way. Yeah. Now I will give you. <laughs> I will give you in one minute the rationale for the F fifty. Okay. And, and then I will kill is, that. Then I will kill that rationale myself. <laughs> The rationale is that the F40 was a V8, the F50 okay. was a V12. Yeah. The next rationale is that V12 was lifted directly out of their F1 car at the time. Right. And the third rationale is that they only made about 200 F50s and yeah. about 499 F40s. So it's a rarer car. Mm -hmm. And then the final one is anyone who's apparently jumped in an F40 and then an F50 is blown away by the F50. Right, but the F40, how do I put it? It's like your Habanas. It's a classic. Yes, so the, the F the F50 is it's very nice. It's a supercar of its day, but it's not a classic. It just has the Ferrari brand with a V12, and it, it it's like just driving a Lamborghini. I hate to say it. It's, so. it's, it's, it's like the new Mustang trying to say, oh, I am actually the no, descendant. No, 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 no. We're not going to compare Ferraris to Mustangs. I'm that, sorry. We're not going to do that. Yeah, that see, we're not going to do. They, they, you they, can say whatever they, you want. But so the, you comparing Ferraris to Mustangs. I said, that, 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 let's pull out the horses. Like, Where's that's my vomit like, Thank you. That is exactly what my sentiment, that, that is exactly what my sentiment is to F50 versus F40. <laughs> See, and I but, but here's what's really but funny. But when you talk about with cars and cigars, so everyone's like, oh, Ferrari, cigars. this, Ferrari, that. Cigars. Yes, that's the new title of our show. Um, but when you talk about that, in its day, I'm talking about like when the Ferrari had the 250 GTO, even when the Maserati had their version of that. Back in the 60s and even the 70s, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati, all of them, those were real cars. Even yes. in the 30s, the Bugatti, and even in the 90s, the Bugatti with the little elephant. The those EB110. Were, the EB110. The yes, EB110. that beautiful car. Yeah, yeah. All those. Really badly made. Yes. Really badly made. Apparently but, the panels but, didn't fit together, but if you right. look at it from a distance, beautiful. It's beautiful. But my yes. point is, those are classics. The newer mm -hmm. stuff like this F80, which is going to be a hybrid or electric, that's all crap. Um, the new cars are crap. Because they're, they're, if it's now not about exclusivity. It's more about how I can push out 10,000 units 
so you can everyone can own one. I don't want to drive the same car if I'm going to spend that kind of money on a car. The you know F40 what I mean? I want to I want to be the one. The F40 F50 test actually is not a bad test because actually you guys, mm -hmm. both of you, you veered towards the F40 primarily, I guess, because that's what Enzo Ferrari signed off last before he, he passed away. Right. That means you both are classical people. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I mean, it talks. and therefore, my analogy yeah, yeah, was you're wearing, you're wearing then, proper dressing and, and suiting and all that stuff as compared yeah, to someone yeah. who asked us to wear dyes and showed up in his t shirt. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So when, 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 when the UFOs are so not, let me, not let me, give, I am on the let, let me give you the explanation. <laughs> let me give the explanation. Sure. Two of my Please favorite both. movies, two of my right. favorite movies, both mm -hmm. originate from the late 80s. Okay. okay. One of those movies was Batman 1989. Yes. Okay. And my sartorial dress sense exists in that Batman y kind of the way to Joker. I, I could never dress the way that Jack Nicholson dressed as a Joker. He was dressed by uh, a Savile Row tailor. My recollection is Tommy Nutter, who made all his suits, beautiful suits. Then the other favorite movie I had was Dirty Rotten Scoundrels with Steve Martin and Michael Caine. That One of my favorite, flex. favorite comedies of all time. Steve Martin was, his character was very different from Michael Caine's. Michael Caine was very polished, very English, blazer. Steve Martin was this kind of the slacker American tourist. And my dress sense exists between those two characters. Right. Sort of like semi-smart to semi-slacker. And that's where I exist. Oh. I exist in, 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 in that late period of the 80s, in that yeah. dirty, rotten sky. So, so if anything, in my, in my head, I'm a character. If you could graduate between Steve Martin to Michael Caine, I'm somewhere in the middle. Right. Okay. And, I get that. That's still, that's still sort of a classical, but that's my rationale for the T-shirt the and not the tie. And I explained this before in many sh in me uh, shows me uh, gone by a long time ago. I only mm -hmm. wear a tie if it's someone's wedding, and I actually like that person getting married. Well, Ooh. you've worn a tie a couple of times on this show, so. <laughs> well, I, well, I wore ties on this show out of respect and admiration for you, uh, wonderful fellows. That's why I wear ah, it. Thank you. Well, we appreciate I wear it for that. you. That for the audience. Comeback, so we let it go. <laughs> Sorry? That was a good comeback, so we let it go. And we'll let it go. go. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad uh I'm glad you acknowledged that I was right. Yeah. Well, and, and because of that, we'll say Geo with a McAllen 25. So Geo, and let yeah. me make an observation. Since I've yeah. been sitting on this program for the last 10 minutes, I have literally seen the sky behind you, Stephen, go from night. I was to day. exactly going to mention that. Yeah. Yes, I literally saw it go from yeah. night to day in ten minutes. That was a very fast sunrise. Here's yeah. what's really cool. I watched last week's show and it did kind of the same thing. And I'm thinking, as it starts getting more, where you know the it's going to be, it's going to get lighter at like eight in the morning. Yeah, in a couple of weeks, the show, my whole show, will be looking like I'm like literally just sitting outside a casino, smoking a cigar, talking to you guys until like the last five minutes. So, so. Stephen, since since you're there at the literally at the breaking of dawn, yeah. you should say the famous words. I love the smell of what oh, in the morning. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Well, no, it won't be napalm. But you're, you're smelling. I love the smell of cigars right in the morning. I love there the smell of cigars sir. in the morning. Listen, every morning, this is what I do anyway. Um, so it's like, <laughs> I'm good, you know. And and like I said, my doctor keeps saying, he says, you know, the scotch and cigars is going to kill you. And meanwhile, all his patients are dying. He's dying. I'm still going. So I'm like, yeah, okay, let's, let's go with that, doc. You know, yeah, it's healthy for you. But no, but the car thing is interesting. There's a new brand. There's a lot of newer newer makes. They're not, they don't have the Ferrari a mystique to it or they don't have a maserati my maserati built crap now but they don't are lamborghini um but there's all these other new cars like you have the newer bugatti which is a very interesting car if you want to compare that to cigars those, are, those to me the are like on. the latest one yeah. is the tourbillon which is kind of like the newer cubans that are coming out like all these like oh look we're going to do this different a different twist on this or a different twist on that or you know whatever anniversary um you have pagani the newer Paganis are, are handmade and gorgeous. So there's a classic undertone to those, but they don't have the lineage of a Ferrari and the Mystique. Because you got to remember back in the day, it was like, oh, you own a Ferrari. I right? think there's a direct correlation. I think there's a direct correlation between sort of like 
old world fine Cuban cigars right. and modern cigars, as uh, and that correlates directly to classic car collectors versus sort of new car new car enthusiasts. I think there's right. there's a bit of a not a bit. There's quite a lot of sort of uh, uh, rationale lap lap over uh, um, uh, uh, crossover going on there. And you'll find that people, in the way that you answer the question about the F40 and the F50, people who like older cigar or older brands right. like their classic cars. That's just right. uh, uh, the way it is. And look, so Usman has got a classic car behind him. Usman has got right. a beautiful VW Beetle as well, an orange one, yeah. which he restored. That says a lot about his personality. And can I tell you, we shared that on our Instagram and it's still getting likes and yeah, comments yeah, yeah, and yeah, still yeah, climbing. Yeah, yeah. It's still climbing up. People <laughs> love I think that's that a class video. Act. I yeah, think that's smart. has got a class act there. I think he needs to, I need, he needs to air that, that uh, gorgeous vehicle uh, more and, and, and give us some sort of like uh, driving around, smoking a nice cigar kind of videos uh, in the bug. You should, you should start seeing them very soon because the weather's gotten nice. Hence the VW season has started. Um, because because as 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 you said, I mean, I I like the way things are. Uh, it's a classic, and uh, given the kind of warm climate we have, it's it's sometimes not really uh, bearable to drive it in the summer. <laughs> now that it's autumn and uh, it it started to get better, the car is going to be coming out pretty regularly. And in a month's time, it'll be a daily driver. So yes, you're going to see a lot of stuff coming soon. Penned, penned by who? Penned by who? What? The VW Beetle. Who was it no. drawn by? Ooh, oh, not, oh. controversial topic there. Controversial topic there. Oh, the I knew, the I knew who made it to the I man with the short moustache. Hitler didn't draw. Stuff. Did Hitler draw? Well, <laughs> you know, when, when, when he saw, there, there was a reason it was actually initially. Well, Volkswagen you know, VW means Volkswagen. the car for the people. It was a very. Right. Well, 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 that was when the commercial production happened. Initially, it was done for something else, if you remember. No, what was it done 1938, for? 1938, 1939 was when it was com like commissioned and the first ones came out. So originally, it was to actually transport your army men and all of that right in a, in a different way hence the first one that you see in the vw museum are those but then yes and uh, then ferdinand uh, porsche got involved that's yes interesting, and, interesting. And, then, right. and then that's that's where the name came in and it became the uh the people's car the people's I mean, car yeah if, if, if you see on my um very smart rebranding. Very, very smart rebranding. Yeah, calling it the Nazi car, it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't do well. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so if, if you see uh, the, the the license plate on my car, I've actually gotten it written as the people's car. I mean, that's that's how it is. And if put I'm more not pictures wrong, up. Put more, I think you need to put more pictures largest, up on your Instagram. This was this was. If I'm not wrong, this was the third or the second. Well, third. If I'm not wrong most sold car in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was the, the most sold car yeah. at one well, the stage. Most the most sold car was Ford, car at one stage. Well, that was the, the first on the most uh, sold car was Ford Model T. Then the second one was Mini. Uh, and the third one was the VW. You know, about 20 years ago, they did the new, the, they did a, a, a reboot of the VW. Of the VW, yep. And yeah, you yeah. would see them everywhere, especially in London. Yeah. You would see them as, now you never see them. They just yeah. vanished. We have them. We have them here in Pakistan. A few of them. Uh, the the twenty-year-old the... model. Yes, yes, yes. So they're they're the. <clears throat> they're Sorry, the Stephen. 20, I said twenty-year-old model. I just triggered you. Uh, go yeah, on. you did. I'm getting excited. <laughs> like, there's a twenty-year-old model. Where is she? Why? Why? I don't. I didn't see her. <laughs> Raza, Raza, just a quick thing. You, uh, my apologies. While I was talking, you were mentioning something about Instagram or something. Uh, what were you saying or suggesting? I was saying you need to put more. Yeah. shots of the beetle up on your cigar yes. instagram right yes, sir. first of all first of all it's a, i think it's a beautiful car thank yeah. you but i think it's a classy car as well classy in the it, well, now what i mean by classy is different from what other people mean by classy classy mean classy means to me something that's understated but <laughs> cool and has pedigree, has some breeding, has some history behind it. And that's why I like a bit. I never used to like VW Beetles. I never used to like them. But 
my appreciation for those things has grown a, a bit like the way you start appreciating aged cigars or right. or aged wines or fine wines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those things that take time to dig into your psyche are actually the better things because they have a long lasting design function uh uh penetration into the world of media and that vw beetle and especially the color that you've got it in which is the same almost the same color as the car behind you or in, in, it's like yeah, that's that's tangerine right. orange color i would never have thought would work because that is a very similar color to uh, to the, the 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 colors that lamborghini used to use on the mirrors in yep. in the late 70s uh, uh um or sorry early 70s um, the, 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 the reason it has an orange color i mean it was it was a whole discovery for me also when i was restoring it uh and and it was primarily because initially i thought i'm going to paint it blue with some beige interior and all that stuff and that's uh, and i and i actually literally purchased it on the morning when i was flying out to the us for the first time uh no well, not the first time the second time and and uh, i was like okay i've got in the car i'm going to go to us so a lot of old car parts are uh, purchased from there i'm going to yeah. purchase them and i'm going to bring them so i purchased all these interior like almost the entire interior for the car thinking that i'm going to paint it blue so the beige interior the beige uh, carpet the lining and all that stuff and when i came back and we started restoring and while we were chipping off the paint which was there on the car which was initially blue which gave me the idea we discovered in just one section of the car where it had the original paint of the car which was orange wow so somebody oh, wow. who had restored it like a couple of times before had done it like a sloppy job so so, so you went back to original you went back to original so so, that, so not only the original in terms of the color I actually then wrote to for Volkswagen in Germany got the original and the authenticity uh, certificate which is the uh, birth certificate of the car as the sage which actually told me not only the color coat but also the entire interior colors and the seating and all of that wow. hence then I went all the way out to sell all of that stuff and get all the things new from us from tmi and uh, sending them the specs because there was also a funny story my car is a 74 but in the us in 74 the seats of these cars got the headrests and the design changed so when i got the stuff and they was like okay no you have a european model which meant that i needed the stuff for compatibility purposes from the 73 american models and not the 74 so these were a so lot they had an upgrade while europe yeah, yeah so 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 i had to go through a lot of uh, these discoveries but i love it and and so i went with all the dog tooth black color seats and the entire interior got in gray and black and all of that so so yeah it was it was good fun and i and and, and the orange color stands out initially i never thought i'd go for an orange color but then i was I was like okay let's go with the complete originality hence I've done it the only couple of things that I changed in it uh for for safety and security purposes primarily are the fact that instead of the drum brakes in the front wheels I've gotten the disc brakes so that at least the car stops in case you need it so whenever you need it in go. case you need it Well, well okay. do you don't do you not stop in Pakistan in the eventuality that you need. Yeah, ge generally you are driving these cars not very fast. So okay. the, the drum brakes apply and they they reasonably well. But when you're on the motorways and since we go out on rallies and all that stuff like the classic car events, that's when you really are in a zone where you're 70 miles, 75 miles kind of speed. Right. So that, that's where you surely need them and hence I I, I went for those. but rest primarily i I've, i've not changed anything other than what the book said and we've we've done it according what's really really interesting to me is my first matchbox car uh -huh. i was maybe 3 years old so this is 1975 oh last week <laughs> 1975 no this is 1975 and i'll dig this up usman you'll be so shocked you'll be shocked mm -hmm. my first matchbox car is retained somewhere in islamabad wow okay. wow exactly why you and, need to come to islamabad and, come to 
Sometimes I'm, 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 about, I'm about to shock you. I'm about to shock you. I'm about to shock you. Are you going to tell us you're going to show up and not show up again? <laughs> I'm about to shock you. Well, this is, you know, ghosts come and go at their will. Uh, okay. I'm about to shock you. The first Matchbox Beetle car, well, it was the first Matchbox car per se. It was a Beetle. Mm -hmm. It was Tangerine Orange. Wow. Mm -hmm. And okay. it had one thing that uh, your car doesn't have. It was hot rodded. It had the engine sticking uh -huh. out of the, uh -huh. the, okay. the, the body. I get it. I get it. I get it. And, well, uh, that, so, that, and, that's and, it. In my books, that is crime because Bug has a engine at the back and not at the right. front. So somebody who has done that. Something hot rodded. No, but the, the, this was Matchbox. So yeah, the, 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 no, there, there are people actually who've done this hot rodding here in Pakistan as well. I mean, they lower the car, they widen yeah. the, the the car, they've done a lot of things in terms of changing the engine and all that stuff. I, I, I somehow don't, I mean, I, I appreciate their style and also that there is a genre of people who like that kind of stuff. I I am probably the old soul who's stuck in the 80s uh, and, and no, originally... Yeah. The no, you did a wonderful thing. You're a purist. You took it yeah. back to where yes. it was. Yes. And that is, especially to do that in Pakistan. I mean, I, I know you got hold of the parts in the USA. Yeah. I remember in 1975-ish, 76-ish, I remember I've got, I've got, my grandfather had what was called in Pakistan, it was called a folksy. Mm -hmm. uh, which is which was the nickname for the Beetle, uh, yes, sort of a short form of Volkswagen, yeah, Foxy, yeah. uh, or Foxy. Some people reduced it down to Foxy. Um, yeah. and I remember seeing those cars new on the road, yes, sir. Uh, and that was an experience at that time. But, uh, there you we, go, that's we, what we, you do. We still, have, we still have a few of those examples of the people who purchased them new as their first car or were given to them as their first car and now are in their late 60s, early 70s. Thank uh, you. And still have those cars intact. Uh, we were talking of real people actually, but Raza, if you want to do that, fine. <laughs> yes, I, I, mean, I know, I look younger than my age. You do, yeah. you do. You're not bad for a 100-year-old guy. Um, <laughs> when I was in LA last week, I was mm -hmm. with my my Uber driver. You know, we were friendly. Mm -hmm. um, he was telling me that he just bought a VW bu bug, but not the car, but the wagon. Oh, a yes. 1970 wagon. And he was showing me pictures and he's restoring what? it. And I was like, I oh, know, my so, God. So 1971. So was it a Are you talking about the minivan? Are you talking about wait, the wait, minivan? Yeah. No, 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 no. So, Stephen, wait, wait, another way. So was it like a full window or was it a split window as in like two windows? Oh. Full, full window. Okay, so, so so he's talking of the VW camper bus, right? Yeah, the VW the VW yeah. camper van. Yeah, yes, he bought that. Yes. So known as T twos, if I'm not wrong. Do yeah. you know oh, how? Do you know how cool that car? Do you know how cool it looks? Do you know? Oh, how yes, cool it does. They are, they and he's are, restore, and he's restoring it, and he was nice enough to give me his number. He said it's going to take him about a year. He says so when you're back in LA because I'm there often. He said, but when you're in LA next time, you call me. California is a heaven for all the classic car stores. Most of my parts that came from the U.S. From LA. Came from California, yeah. So California bugs and uh, J-Bugs and all of those people. But yeah. Oh, I see some lightning happening right behind Raza. Oh, that's that's the UFO. Don't worry. Uh, we're good. Um, so we just had a fan ask us. Um, Sebastian mm -hmm. said, gentlemen, what are you smoking? And I told him we would tell him. So, ah, gentlemen, please hey, tell Sebastian. them what you're smoking. Hey, Sebastian. I hope Paris and, 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 and France is great, as always. I'm smoking an Epicure number two. Very nice. Mr. Rizzo, uh, what are I, you smoking? I, great. Nope. That's your <laughs> <time. laughs> Wow. Nothing but class here, uh, everybody. There's yeah. an A. Chapman something or other. And number two. An H. Chapman yeah. And I'm sorry, Sebastian. I'm not cool like you guys on the on the uh, cigar keep. I'm smoking a CAO Brazilian Amazon, my my steady favorite because for five dollars or six dollars a stick, 
it always is a great smoke. So I, 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 I will share this. Us Usman will uh, understand it, perhaps. Sure. Uh, Stephen may also know it. I smoked that the other day. That was outstanding. Well, let's get a close up of this. Very close. I can't see it. Can't you know see it. That? Here you go. Oh, now no, you no. can. Ah, oh, the intermediate smoke. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Well, 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 well to, 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 to the young story. man. To the young man who presented me with this, and that was Marshall, who yes. is the who's a shop manager at number six, and yes. uh, he likes to pull my leg whenever, and sometimes he pulls both legs so I fall over. Wow, I'm glad he doesn't pull off. Um, right. He he recommend he recommended this cigar to me. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Yeah. I did a the I cut it. I did the so this cigar had a ponytail on it, and I cut it and I did the dry draw. It was like chocolate the dry draw was literally like and, and not dark chocolate milk it. chocolate you were smoking oh. diplomatic because what did you expect it is well, always like well no, 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 I, I kind of I, I started, started, very much like that i've started to i've started to take cigar smoking a little bit more seriously than i used Thank to very much uh, uh, no no and and that is because i'm around i'm around <laughs> well, this is this is what happens when you marinate in in smoke, right? So I'm marinating around you. First of all, you splendid fellows, but also my cigar smoking circle. I've managed to whittle it down to people who talk cigars in a technical way. Now, I never used to do that. I'm being very honest. I never used to do that. And one of the things that I've focused on in my cigar smoking now more more than I used to focus on aroma is I've started focusing on taste. So mm. if you remember, uh, Usman, uh, four or five episodes ago or six episodes ago, had those little uh, sample taste. oils, those right. essences where where someone who's starting to smoke cigars or someone who wants to appreciate the flavors in cigars can get a, a little understanding of what it is they're tasting. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and truth be told, uh, you know, all those things stick for me. Okay. And... Ever since then, I have actually made a little bit more effort to literally taste my cigars and spend a little bit more time tasting them rather than just marinating in aromas. So the the note that I got from the, the, the Diplomatico was chocolate on the dry draw, only on the dry draw. I lit mm -hmm. it up and it was chocolatey. It was sort of like coffee beans if you feel like roasted coffee beans it had that and i really enjoyed it and that's the and and the thing that was agitating me in the beginning is i don't like narrow uh ring gauge cigars generally i always get nervous about whether the draw is going to be good and it was perfect perfect draw all the way through so much so that uh, osman has abandoned us he's, he's probably he's probably gone off the video he's now going to look for the box and you say right i've got this box of diplomatic <laughs> so i'm going to smoke it i was i was like I was actually trying to do that, but the fact yeah. is, it's too far away from my hand, and I'm kind of like in a chill mode and not moving up. He's like, you can tell he's like, he's like a king in his throne right now. He's like, I don't really want to get up to go move to get it. And Sebastian well, said, by no, the way. No, the, um, the, thing, the, thing is, the thing is, previously when I used to be connected over Wi-Fi through an iPad, yeah. I had a lot of room to play. Now, right. because of the wired connection, I am like... Okay, I'm not gonna move anything to. <laughs> you know what? Your your connection so, so, so is, is absolutely is, wonderful today. Yeah, I, I hope should be that, every I, week. I've said it enough times. Yeah, so that, that so that's going to be permanent. So since it's the first time, there are a few things moving around from next right. time on. This, it'll be fixed because I'm not liking that I have to look down, kind of. Okay. Well, um, you should never look down at anything. Laptop, so yeah. yeah, so I want to look at like <laughs> right in the face. So I'm gonna put a put a. Well, any further, we'll be able to see your brain through your nose. Wow, oh. that, that's exciting. <laughs> and Sebastian just said in a comment, just so you're aware, he says, Usman knows me so well. So I thought that was very, it's nice that you have, we have regular fans that know, but that's yes, also so coming from, I think, Sebastian, the, uh, Sebastian, the... Sebastian is a, Sebastian is a very good friend and, and very, I would say, very generous friends because he helps me find a lot of Cubans from around the world. Really? So, I can go to Miami and get you as many so Cubans Sebastian as you want. Sebastian is your, your local Victoria. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Never mind. I was gonna say if you need me, like we can put them in a container if you need them. You're talking no, cigars. There's a different. We should story. do the program in French for the French-speaking audience. I yeah. I know enough French to get slapped. In fact, I took college French, our university French. 
I went to France. I started to speak to my waiter in French. And he said to me, without hesitation, he said... He went like this. He, he, he said this. He went... <laughs> no, no. Because I, I, tra- I was really trying. He says to me, um, do you speak English? I go, yes. He goes, stick with that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> like, I was so bad. Like, they teach you at university and what, you, what the real French people speak. Two different Frenches. And yeah. then I went into a shop with my university sweatshirt on. And I was like, bonjour. You know, and it's not like an Italian. And the ladies loved me. My friend's wife, who speaks fluent French, goes in there fruent. and starts speaking fruent, fru- fruent fluent French. Fluent, fluent French. No, you said fruent. What's fruent? <laughs> fruent French. When you're from New York, it's fluent. So anyway, <laughs> um, and, I, and so she tries to speak to the clerk. And meanwhile, the clerks are speaking to me in English, and she's trying to speak to them in French. They won't give her the time of the day. And they were just like, no, no, we'll stick with the, we'll stick with the Americans. She goes, I'm American. She goes, yes, yes, but we like him more. Because it was just, I went in there like, bonjour. And they're all just laughing like, uh, this American's an idiot. Yeah, like, American. Yes, American, you know. Okay, this is, was, uh, having said all of that, something yeah. reminds me that, though I like you smoking and sitting outdoors and actually yep. change, looking at the change of the my, scenery. My Cuban collection, yes. Inside, showing us all of those, Fancy shamancy Cuban cigars. I, I will so I here's what I thought. I thought about that this morning. And I said uh-huh. to myself, I have I have two choices. Mm-hmm. I can enjoy my McAllen um 25 yeah. with my mates and my cigar, or I can sit inside, not smoke any cigars. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna smoke some cigars. So I think what I'm gonna do next week is I will bring a few out with me and share yes. them. I was but gonna I say figured, that, that'll be a better idea. If yeah, you just take a few of them out, think, then that's fine. I think Riza has seen. Or someone has seen, I brought out the H. Upman, his favorite brand, um, from like 1958. It's still in the tube and it's beautiful. Oh, it's just a I would not to do that. I I'll send you a picture, but next week I'll bring it for the show. Yeah. Yes, sir. We, we must. Yeah, I, have a whole, I literally have a humidor on my desk and it's nothing but um, pre embargo Cubans that was given to me by um, a business associate. A friend of his had passed away. He, does, he smokes like a cigar a year. The guy's wife gave him all these pre-embargoes. He goes, what should I do with them? I go, dude, you can either sell them or you just give them to somebody. And he, so a, a month later, I get it. He calls me and goes, dude, there's a package coming for you. I'm thinking, okay. I didn't really put two and two together. And I opened it up and there were these pre-embargo Cubans. And I was Amazing. like, almost in tears. It was like, wow. So, and, I, and Bowman or whatever in the UK was offered to auction them. I'm like, no, I'm good. I like that. Yeah, I like that's the old school me. That's like that to me is better than any supercar, older, new collection. Ever. Absolutely. That's, Absolutely, that to me is the perfect thing. So, Absolutely, so it's not as good as an F40. Now, okay. now, uh, now yeah. uh, bringing better. bringing this back to another story sure. and, 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 and 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 a thing. Uh, once uh, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that as I is done with the pot, would you light up the cigar now for a change? Or are you going to stick to do that? You, do, you, do you know how to light up a cigar? Or, 35 no. minutes? Actually, 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 you actually, actually, cigars, actually, you, actually. Just, you, have, you have a lot of cigars. You can smoke any of this. Yeah, pick I'm one. Smoke something. Here we go. Give me a moment. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know what you're trying know. to do. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. This could take over. This could take over. You know the, the theme from Jeopardy? Dun, 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 dun. They're like, and your, and your answer is... But he's still yeah. not sure. I know he's not I'm sure he's thinking. Smoke this one, if we're going to stick to the H. Upman theme, I'll smoke another H. Upman. Is this okay? Which H. Upman are you going to yes, smoke? Sir. Because the people I, on the I podcast have can't have see it. I have a feeling there's something very limited edition coming up. Uh-oh. I can do that as well. Would you like me to do that? Okay. I would like you to smoke know. whatever you would like to smoke, my it's, friend. It's your choice. Okay. Okay. Let me do that then. Would you like me to smoke what? a limited edition? Sure. What are you going to be smoking? But the, the, the only thing is, now that you've already smoked one, yeah. this is not going to be as great mm. as unless you've cleansed your palate and you've given some time. So yeah, but, not to ruin the, no, but not to ruin I'll the give experience. It hang, on, the, hang on, I'll give it some time. Wait, 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 give me one second. Oh my God. The dramatic. Okay. Time, time has been given. Princess has given us, Princess has taken the time now. So now, <laughs> now he can light up his cigar. What will you be smoking for the people on the podcast that can't see you? So. Uh, Us- uh, Usman, what should I smoke? Whatever you feel like. Oh, here's something by Sebastian, which is a very good question. While we're going to check out the cigar first, I, he's going to be smoking a 
something. I knew, I, I, knew, I knew the H up and Robusto is coming out. I, there I, you I, go. I, well, and we'll be smoking what for the fans that are listening? Is this any good? I have not smoked it. I want no. to smoke it. I have not you, smoked you it. You smoke it, but should I smoke this one? As you said, it's your choice. What is the other option? Well, the other option is uh, Diplomaticos. I would say go with the Diplomaticos because given the fact that you've smoked a dud already and you've not cleansed your palate, um, <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, yeah, go for it. <laughs> See, All right, not we're not going to... <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna we're not gonna close up you while you're learning to light a cigar. Now yeah. Sebastian Sebastian wrote a very interesting question. Yes. What is the oldest cigar you have ever smoked and how was it? And I can answer that. I smoked, mm -hmm. I had about six or seven, and I still have like five left of the H. Upman um from pre-embargo Cuban. I smoked one of those and a couple of the other pre-embargo Cubans, and I will tell you it was an absolute delightful smoke. And that one I could taste everything. The smell was wonderful. Um, so my oldest cigar I've ever smoked was from probably the late 50s, early 60s, and it was a Cuban cigar um, before the um, uh, the embargo. And Sebastian is smoking a uh, QU Capoletto while he's listening to us. Thank you, Sebastian. And Rizzo, what did you finally light up? Is so, so Sebastian is smoking an regional France, which is the QD Capitolios. Okay. Now, to answer, now, to answer Sebastian's question, Sebastian, yeah. this is the oldest I've smoked ever. It's a 1961 Lost wow. Petals made by hand. You can see it's... It, and, 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 the, and the best part is I opened it up myself. Even the seal was not ever opened for the box. So it was a completely sealed box when I got it. And And, and after looking at this, I was like, what has happened to all the Cuban cigars? The boxes used to be super nice in the past. Yep. So, so see. Yep. And it was one of those things which was wow. in cedar. So this is this is this is the oldest I've smoked a 1961 Los Tetos Deluxe. Wow, that's a beauty. See, I can appreciate that because of the the fifty, the late fifty, early sixty Cubans. Yeah, Rizzo, what's yeah. the oldest cigar that you smoked? I mean, you know, the oldest cigar that I probably smoked, as I told you, I used to, I used to um, uh, smoke cigars from my father's humidor, and this is right. from about nineteen eighty five ish, eighty six ish. I would imagine I was smoking cigars from the late seventies, so. They would have been. I I really don't recall. They they were Monte right. Cristos and they were Romeo and Julietas. Those were the, those right. were two brands that ostensibly my father's humidor. It just it was right. racked that way, and uh, I, I I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. But I was I was smoking late seventies, early eighties cigars, and whenever I've smoked something from that kind of, I've smoked a nineteen eighty to Monte Cristo number one. Right. Would that be right? Monte, sorry, nine, nine, Monte, 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 Monte one in the tube, 82, 83, 84, that kind of thing. But basically cigars no, no, no. that are 14 uh, years. Hold on. Monte Cristo number one, it would be a special number one if I'm not wrong. Probably, probably, probably. Yeah. I've got the tubes it's, lying around. Yeah, so it would be especially number one if I'm if my memory serves me right, because there was no Monte Cristo number one at least if I'm not wrong. Hang on, Hang on yeah. let me get through. Hang on, uh, let me get through. Now everybody's gonna go check their stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, the best part about this is the 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 gentleman who I really respect and admire, Alexander Groom. Uh, right. Or, or Alexander Thomas Groom, who has come up with this amazing website by the name of Cuban Cigar Website and has written the book El Habano Moderno. Right. Uh, so, so, so that is oh, all. This well, yes, you're right. Uh, you're right. Raza Monte Cristo number one is sorry is is still a standard production, and uh, it's 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 a Corona. Oh, well, yeah, forty two into one hundred and sixty five millimeters. So, you so those are the kind of, in recent times, the older cigars, not particularly special, but just very old, very age, right. and sort of very, very reminiscent, nostalgic of the early 80s. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Yeah, but you know what's funny is in the 80s, cigar smoke in the, toward the mid to end 80s became fashionable again. Like everybody's, oh, you have to smoke a cigar. Um, and what I've learned over the years is I've been smoking for you know, 100 of them. It's just you just enjoy it. So it's the, it's the people that fade in and out. Like right now we have the Chinese and, and the Indian um, culture that are smoking tons of cigars, driving up prices. And at some point that'll fade as well. And then it'll go back to just the other people that smoke. But, but the I thing was is, having this conversation. The only problem is the prices are still not going to come down. It's like all of those your wines and watches where once they've gone up, they've gone up, and they've they've been categorized as a luxury product. So right. intellectual items. So that's that's a shame for all those real aficionados connoisseurs who actually enjoy and appreciate it rather than just collecting dust. Right. But, but that's yeah. not true. That's not true, though, because if you go back to the supercar analogy, I'm, I'm, a lot of supercars are coming down in price because COVID is over. And a lot of these guys who thought it'd be really cool to spend, whether it's half a million or five million for a car, are finding out you it's not a daily driver. You have to really be an enthusiast to do it. And yeah. so this two choices in the cigar thing. Now, if it keeps going the way it's going, yes, it's just going to go up and up and up because everyone's going to do it. But if it gets to a point where it's like people are like, oh, it's nice, but I don't want to do it anymore. And they're just going to they've just bought them and they're not buying anymore. If they want the newer generation to get into it, they're going to have to bring their prices down again. Because we you were know, having like this the, conversation yesterday about sort of uh, sort of the fundamental origins of cigar smoking and how cigar smoking is developed in the sort of. Uh, 60s 70s and 80s sort of that was a kind of period of time that i at the very least the 70s i saw it as a kid i right. saw my father smoking cigars cigar smoking even the way that cigars got into the uk for example maybe it was 150 years ago it was always through diplomatic circles these, these were always gifts these were right. always uh sort of a new form of currency uh to uh between i guess diplomats between high society and it was a high if that is a word that can still be used terminology it was a high society smoke and it was i saw you know my father's circle were, were bankers or men of industry or uh i would imagine politicians but you know and even now people who are smoking cuban cigars and it was just cuban cigars then really they're trying to evoke that old world nostalgia and now right. you have like a whole different set of cigar smokers like young people are smoking cigars they're getting into this but ultimately this is a time machine this is a time capsule this is a time yeah. capsule it takes you back to a nostalgic period of time just the way that classic cars take you back you you really want to own and drive cars that when you were a kid you saw on on the streets and you couldn't buy then or you couldn't access then and you turn 40 50 years old you've got enough disposable income you can actually go out and buy that car and that's the same way that cigar smoking is going what i'm seeing hugely in the especially in the uk uh, market especially sitting in london which is a hotbed of cuban cigar smoke is a total hotbed is this introduction over the last four or five years of the new of the non-cuban cigars to bring in, to basically to yank in a new audience, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, so again, I, I'm going to stick to the car analogy, if you don't mind. Sure. If you if you were a teenager in the 80s, okay, you would lust after a VW Golf or a BMW or a Mercedes. And even that had criteria. You would start at a Golf you then want to progress onto your BMW 3 Series, and then if you got more money to a 5 Series, then to a 7 Series, or you would go through the Mercedes chain, you would go on it, start on a C-Class, go to an E-Class, get to an S-Class. I think that's that's what's happening with this. To be honest, that's what I see is happening with the cigar industry. You're hooked on to smoking, not hooked, that's a really bad word. You start on something that's much more financially accessible. You start on... Right. The, the non-Cuban cigars that can range in price. I don't I don't know, like from Osmani right like from 10, 15 pounds all the way up to, you know, with the Mirafils, very expensive uh non-Cuban cigars. Um <laughs> they're they're uber luxury. Uber luxury. Uh but and then what you want to get onto a finer smoke. So you want to go from your VW golf all the way up to the Ferrari. And the Ferrari in my mind 
is the Cuban cigar. It's not always perfect, but it has a different delivery. It puts a smile on your face. It's got complex tastes, complex aromas. It's got history associated with it. The brand, each brand has a history associated with it. There are special editions. There are regional editions. The Ferrari, Ferrari made the Daytona for the US market. That's why it's called okay. the Daytona. They made a Ferrari California. It's called a California because it was for the California market. So it's that analogy to me is a very strong analogy that for me, I see it quite vividly. And um, sorry right. for the rant rave, but I kind it's of right. see a, a very, very co a strong connection between those two things. Yeah, but the California didn't sell. Um, the Daytona is like a collector's item. The California is like a Corvette. It's a piece of crap. So anybody that bought that, their head should be examined. But Sebastian yeah. brings up a good point. And his point is prices of Cuban cigars will never go down again. Knowing the Havana politics um, since the last few years, there will be a point where cigars are only um, accessible to only wealthy people. Well, thank you. And then well, I well, guess well, I'll be smoking well, cigars. Sebastian, I, 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 I agree with you on that point to a lot of extent, but I also have to say that it might also be the case that there are 27 brands. So, and, yeah. and if you see, they've actually brought the two uh, brands into that Uber luxury category, which is Cohiba and Trinidad, primarily because they relate to the, uh, the, the, the uh, connections with Fidel Castro. Other than that, right. there are five other global brands in which there are still certain affordable cigars, but what they're trying to do is to bring them into the luxury category. They're introducing new Vitolas, a new range, for example, the Linea di Oro in Romeo, Linea 1935 in Monte Cristo, and now the Linea Maestra in Partagas. <clears throat> Having said that, for all the other brands, yes, the prices have increased a little bit, uh, but still there are certain brands which, which you can get and explore, and I'm guessing there should be something available. And if not, I mean, and if it becomes that unfortunate, then we'll see how to go about it. Having said all of that, I was about to ask, and now rather that you've started to show, how is your 12 years old limited edition H. Upman Robusto smoking? Well, look at the ash structure. The ash is real. And now, Tell me slightly, the slightly cedary and very, I, I, this is what I'm getting, okay? I'm getting a very slight tingle of pepper on the tip of my tongue. I'm getting sweetish cedar. It's a non-abrasive cigar, but it's much, much tastier, if I could use that, than the than the A. Chapman Connoisseur 2. Okay. It's, it's a tastier cigar. It has more to it. Now, here's a new thing I've started doing. Again, this is primarily to... Uh, a very nice friend I have, Jao, who, who who does this all the time. He's got very sensitive palate to aroma. And he will do this. He will circulate the cigar a little bit, take in the smoke. I don't get huge much out of it, but I'm trying. I'm retrohaling quite a lot, so I get a lot of rush of cigar smoke through my sinus and I, I taste it that way but each to their own fair enough fair enough but yeah, the, structure, the structure is beautiful you can see the structure yeah. is absolutely beautiful uh, okay so so just to just to share i've smoked this cigar not in the el category but because because this was the el in 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 2012 Later, uh, they actually released the H. Upman Robusto in a travel humidor of six cigars. So a friend of mine had that travel humidor from the 2014 or 15, if I'm not wrong. That's when it was released and launched. Uh, and and uh, since last year, it was completely like sealed. So we opened it and we smoked one of each out of that, and it is a very, very good cigar. It has aged and matured very rightly. So given the fact that this is even two years older and in EL, which means two years more age on it, so I'm guessing this would be a very good smoke, Gordon. I'm guessing that you are going to okay. love this, Usman. You're, yeah, I'm I've, already, I've already messaged Kristen about it, uh, that please save me <laughs> in this cigar, because... I have requested Radha to save her on this one. So before anyone else takes those from him, 
I've, I've requested... And Christian will probably drop me a message saying, done. He's like that, done. No, no, it's he will not send tell you done. He will just hand it over to you because I've requested him. As I will, as always, forget until you remind ask him. Ask him. Ask <laughs> him for two. Ask him for two. Yes, sir. I shall message Christian for two. <laughs> I love this it. This is this is live cigar ordering taking place. I was just yeah. going to say on the two O F actually live isn't Christian, cigar, isn't live Christian cigar watching? ordering. Is a Christian watching this at Tom Tom's right now, live on their big screen? He should just Chris, be texting Chris, in to us. Chris, Christian's got to a different level. He 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 lets really? others run things on the weekend. Okay. Well, oh. um, so, you mean, so he's home, and, and, so he should I, definitely I, be I watching. Think, I think I think oh, he's, me, he's... I, I think I think he's having given me, given me the answer of an F forty yesterday. He's going to sit quietly. He's going to watch videos of, of F-40s and F-50s driving by. I'm going to watch it. And tomorrow I'm going to watch the F-1 here in Austin. Hey, listen, Sebastian oh. asked another question. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was at an F-1 party on um, Wednesday night. It was very yeah. cool. And, uh, you know, cars are small. Uh, and the drivers, they're very yeah, small. Yeah, wait, yeah, here's a question, question from Sebastian. You. Question here's for you. Question. Wait, wait. Did you see? Look at Sebastian's question. He wants to know. To Riza. This is for Riza. This is going to be yeah, great. Yeah. I see you only post, only post Cuban cigars because you're a snob. No, um, but do you smoke any New World or non-Cuban? Okay. I find the Opus X so um, the is, and, and no, X no, no. is a good Cuban. Blah, 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 blah. Listen, listen to the full question. Wait, the full question. He left. It doesn't matter. He's upset. That's oh, it. No, Reza, is, Reza is here with the audio. He would have gone to fetch some non-Cubans. I know. I'm, I'm sure he's going to get do that. I'm, I'm guessing he's going to bring the. So, Uber so this back. is my last. Two years of cigars. Okay. Okay. Right. That's my last two years. All right. Okay. Uh, it's not total. Yeah. But, yeah but there is a substantial weight to this, and I'm not talking about the glass, right? Let me randomly put my hand in and pull out a band and wow. answer Sebastian's question. Please. How many random attempts will I take to pull out a non Cuban? Is this first of all? Is this like when the the owl on, looks come on, come on, pop? Uh, Usman, Usman, okay. how many random dips before I get a non-Cuban? Most likely the first one. Uh, Stephen, five, five. Okay, random. I'm not looking. Okay. Uh, we have Partagas. Okay, that's a Cuban. Okay, next random dip. Go ahead. Well, uh, okay, that's a Cuban. That's two. Keep counting, gentlemen. We, we can count. This is the third one. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, you lucky, 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 lucky boy. Oh, oh, Arturo Fuente. Yeah. Oh, Fuente, number three. It took the third one. Three, it took three dips. Okay. To me. But there oh, is some me. really... I mean, look! Look what I found right sitting at the top. Oh, I love that guy. I smoke yeah. those. I love those. Those are great. Now, now, actually, looking in here, I can try and find you the worst cigar. No, no. I've no, ever no, don't, don't, don't find that. There's a question. There's a part of the question that is coming to you, and that is, I find Opus X Angels Shore or Share Perfection X better than a lot of Cubans I've yep. smoked. Am I being provocative? So now answer this part. I'm going to smoke my Opus X next week. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm smoking next week. The Opus X in the tube. Yeah. Oh, right. Placentia. Placentia. That's an okay cigar. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Oh, one of my favorites. Kalanis. Oh, this Usman, Usman, Usman knows this. Oh, shitty cigars. El Camacho, they're the that's crap. Why do you even smoke that? I'm trying to oh, find Reza, 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 Reza had these like as his breakfast cigars at the time when he would only smoke this. Sorry to use the word crap, but yeah. yeah. I've never been a fan of Camacho, I don't know why. Reza, uh, Sebastian, I, I'm 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 going to answer the rest of the part for that you've asked, Raza. Uh and, and and I'm gonna say because he's gonna because now that he's gone into the treasure hunt, he's not going to come back for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, love that's, it. I no Aurora. Okay. Oh, look. A totally shit cigar. Hang on. Which one? I know it's coming. Dab oh, it off. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're nice. They're still nice. They're still nice. 
Okay, so Sebastian, uh, I've I've smoked some of the Opus X's. I've not smoked the specific that you you referred to. Uh, they're good cigars. They're like smooth, kind of like the same all the way. A lot of smoke, but uh, you are a lunatic. I know that. That's the cigar I hate the most. That's the cigar. Oh I hate. The cigar I hate the most is somewhere in here. I yeah, really yeah. Really so, 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 so. Uh, I would still say, regardless of whatever the price point and a lot of Opus X's, I smoke. I got a gift presented to me last week. Uh, oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Again, oh, Rocky like, Patel, what a waste! No, 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 no! no, no. I'm trying, there's a point I'm trying to make. There's a point yeah. I'm trying to make. Sebastian asked me, "Do you smoke hmm? anything other than Cubans? You've only got Cubans on your Instagram, right?" All right. I was trying to demonstrate. And I, again, I had this conversation with someone the other day. Oh, look at this. Hold on. We'll get a close up again. Oh, uh, what you call it? I have a whole Bird, computer. Bird, Bird, guys. It's not Bird, Bird, Bird. Yeah. Right. So the point that I'm trying to make is that I have been through a plethora of New World cigars. Oh, non Cuban. Non Cuban. Uh, there's another yeah, shit one. Thank you for reminding me. That's, uh, that's Opus X. Opus X is a good cigar. Another shit one. It is, it is, it is decent as compared to a lot of others, yeah. but I, I, I didn't really, I, and I, and I would agree to what you generally say. When I have to have flavor and aroma and profile of a good cigar, I would go for Cubans if I want smoke and smoothness. And yes, mostly sometimes non Cubans. Yeah, I agree with that. That's that's why that's why I said I mean, like you know. I mean, I mean, the point that I'm trying to make, and I'm trying to make yeah. this point emphatically, emphatically. Point made, point made. Excuse me. The point I'm trying to make emphatically yes, is yes. that in order to appreciate the Ferrari, you have to drive shitty go. Toyotas first. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. So, Sebastian, so, now you know, now you know, problem. there was a reason he spent 12 minutes because he had to come with this. What the hell is this? Another shit cigar. Hold on, let's two, see what this one is. It's a Fuente. It's a Fuente, yeah. Right. Yeah, some people some people go, oh, wonderful one. Great bands. I listen, I'm I'm not detracting. I'm not detracting from a Toyota. A Toyota is a superbly engineered car. It's got some history. But it's a Toyota. You you can put a Lexus badge on it, but it's still a Toyota. Right. Okay. Right. And the point that I'm trying to make is, which I don't know if I'm making, I don't know if I'm upsetting people, I don't know if I'm making people I, I haven't got a clue, right? My smoking journey is Toyotas, Mitsubishis, Nissans, um, Datsun, Datsuns, etc. And they have their value. Yeah, yeah. And then you drive a Ferrari. What do you want to drive after that? Bugatti, Pagani. Um, yeah, I you just want to keep. You just want to yeah. keep. At, and from time to time, you will drive a Toyota because you need to go to the shops and pick up your grocery. But here's the other thing, though. Sometimes, like I like my CAO Brazilians because then when I smoke the higher end cigar that may have more smoke or more flavor or a Cuban or whatever it might be, I definitely appreciate it more than if I'm smoking Cubans 24 7. So I do now, it. Mine's cigar, a little different. Yeah. This cigar was sitting there for five minutes on my ashtray. I didn't really like it. Boom. Right. So Thanks. Sebastian, you also said it can be a total surprise to open a sealed box that old. Hope yeah. it was well conserved. Yes, sir, it was absolutely well conserved. I purchased it from the United Kingdom from Seagars. Uh Mr. Lorchant uh, owns Seagars. So I purchased the box from there. I rather won it in an auction. Uh when it arrived, it was completely sealed in a very decent condition. Having said all of that, as what I do with most of the cigars that they travel, uh, I, I, I just crack open a box and smoke one. In this case, I did not want to risk that part. So I kept the box in the electric humidor for almost, almost about six to eight months, post which I opened. And this reminds me that, yes, I need to put some pictures and the video of this box when I unseal it. So I'm sure that'll be a good one. No, and make sure we uh, we'll put that on our stuff too, because I know people like it. I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I, I surely will do that. Yeah, yeah. I love when you tag. We love when now, you tag us. Now, we'll there is Here. there is a cigar that I will mention. Ast Here, Aston that, Martin that... DVs. Oh, so so so. <laughs> now, there's there's a cigar that I've pulled out of here, which 
warms it's open my, like warm, warms my heart a little bit. It's there a star band. Yeah, yeah. He's coming up with Uber Luxury. Any, anytime you want to show up. No, Uber Luxury has been done many times. Okay, okay. now which one is that? Now that's a class act. Oh, yes, sir. Very nice. You want to tell everybody what it is? No. Mm -hmm. on. No? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's, I don't it's... need to because Usman won't stop talking now. Usman, what is it? <laughs> It's it's it, it's it's a custom rolled Cuban cigar that we, as part of our local community, uh, got developed and branded it as Jinnah ones to be shared amongst friends. So that's, really, that's, and, that's, and even I managed really? to get one. Right, I was gonna say, wait a minute. Even um, though they were be, for friends, even I, I was just gonna to say one. they were for friends. Really? Hmm. I don't Steven, see Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. Okay. So, so there's a reason I asked you the address some days ago. There's a friend already on his way to the U.S. So you should be getting a box very soon. Oh what my goodness! Thank you. I will smoke them live on the show. Yes, sir. Thank hey, you very much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna so smoke them. Were, them yeah, they were actually they were actually rolled last year in September, October, and we received them in December last year. Very so, cool. All so right. There was prior to me getting onto the show. Right. That's why we have not received it so far. But yes, you're going to get them very soon. Very cool. I, well, that's going to be... Oh, that's okay, definitely going okay, on. Instantly. Okay, This wow, is a cigar. A now, this is a cigar brand. Uh -huh. I've mentioned a few times. Now, you don't get this in London. It's not a Cuban. It's not oh. a Cuban. Okay. Sebastian fell out of his chair. I happen to like it. I happen <laughs> to like it. Okay. If I happen you can to find like it. it. And <laughs> I'm, it's not that I'm promoting it, yeah. But I oh, happen to like it. this. They pay. They pay. The, they pay the bills. Promote it. So, and Usman probably hasn't smoked these. He might have. He... Bring it up, Saga. Of course, I have Nirkarius. That's right. Yes, sir. Now, I, I think. That. I think this is the best Dominican cigar I've had. Saga, really? I I personally don't agree, but okay, if you say so. No, but you're the sommelier. We'll go with what you're saying. Yeah, only what you say, because, uh, you know, you went to school and took a test. <laughs> you did. Uh, Camacho, Camacho. Yeah, well, yeah. You love your Camacho. Camacho. Are you still smoking those in the morning as your breakfast cigar? Or have you graduated? No, no, no. no. It's Camacho, I have, I, it's a relatability thing. I smoke Camachos when I'm in Pakistan. Oh, okay. Mainly. Okay. Mainly? Okay. Very nice. Well, that was good. Anybody, our fans ask lots of questions. See, the fans love it when the three of us are together because they get from our Somalia questions and then they get from the two of us smart ass stuff. Um, <laughs> so, because we know nothing. And then for you to pull out your, your bands was very cool. And next week, I will pull out a few of the um, pre embargo Cubans to show the fans what we have. Um, and I think that'll, that should be interesting. And then if the fans have stuff, stuff they want us to say, take a look at, we can do that as well. So. But Usman's yeah. ordering more cigars from Tauntaun. So, from <laughs> I've, 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 I've already done I that. I, I, I love the real-time ordering of cigars. I love that. So I that's what People are watching the show right. going, oh, he's ordering cigars. There, uh, so, is lost in his brand jar. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sebastian's like, Rizzo is lost in his brand jar. Yes. Just oh, he lost the, you know, no, that's testament to... It, 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 when people start messaging in, and if there's a question mm -hmm. that can be answered, let's answer it in the empirical way rather than the subjective yes. way. I let's agree. Let's just show them. It took me three draws to pull out a non-Cuban, right? Yeah. That I, should... was expect, I was expecting it to be the first one, given the amount of shit Camachos that you've smoked, and I <laughs> saw it in the jar. But okay, fine, whatever. There's the overview. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Oh, yeah, we'll get a we'll get a close up of your jar in again. The, in, in the entire view, when it was moving, you can see Camachos everywhere. Yeah, because the band is big and they're very colorful. That's why all the all the all the quality stuff is in the middle. Actually, there's okay. no end of it. There's just no he's end. Of it. He's literally got ADHD, M O U S C. He's got it all. So I'm just saying. There's, so, a, no, there's <laughs> just a band that I'm looking for, and it's like okay. literally the shittiest cigar on the planet. You just said the other one was the crappiest cigar in the planet. Oh, look now! Now this is an interesting band. Now this is okay. an aftermarket. This is an aftermarket band. This is a, a second band, really which I like. like. I like. I like. I like that they did this. Okay. Anytime you want to show everybody. Oh, hmm. that's commemorating the thirtieth anniversary anniversary of 
Number Hava six Havana, Cavendish. No, not number six Cavendish. Technically, Hava Havana, which was the 30 years of business. Number six Cavendish is going to complete its five years this year. So the, yes, it's the it's the 30 years of being in business by Ajay and Bhavna. That's right. So, in Teddington. So, Can yeah, you see so, it? So in Teddington, yeah. which is technically Hava Havana or the LCDH Teddington. But mm. yes, since both of them are their businesses, so they celebrated 30 years of being in the business. That's a beauty. Pretty soon the show will be 30 years old. So, so, and, and, so, and the cigars that were part of this event were really amazing. I, I, loved, I loved smoking the Year of the Rabbit, Davidoff Year of the Rabbit. I really enjoyed that one. Okay. I did, I, since I do not enjoy Olivas, so I did not really enjoy that Oliva that much. But I loved smoking the Ramon Iones Private Stock 230. Uh, to the dismay of our dear friend Raza here, but yes, that was that was a great cigar. And talking about Davidoff and the year of a year of the rabbit. Remember last week we were in and yes. out because of the UFO. But I said I yes. I sent. They said, would you like to know more about the the um, the twelve year collection, the ninety six yes. cigars, right? So I sent my stuff, and that true to Davidoff, still waiting. Oh, so, I've got one Small really? favorites in here. Yeah, still waiting to hear. Or for them to at least send the box. They've done nothing. So. Send them a reminder. Send them a reminder. Hound hey, them. If you want me Hound to spend them. that kind of money, you should have someone drive up to the house. I agree you, with you. After, after you get over the moat and the guard dogs and the guys with the machine guns <laughs> and the turrets, you come to the house and then we go from there. So, well, oh, this you is showing? Shitty cigars I, again. Durga 12 years is... Uh... He, hey, Sebastian's right. We've lost Rizzo. <laughs> Yeah, so he's gonna be he's gonna be there all day. Next week, uh, he'll still be um, looking in the um, jar. Uh, no, get it, get it, get it, get it, go. A Cuban hit, you know, that's how an inexpensive Cuban, but yeah. it hits the mark from time Bugueros, to time. Bugueros. Any given day, Bugueros. I love them. I love them. They are the only value brands of uh, oh, sorry, volume brands of uh, Banos, which are long fillers. Made in the same factory as Trinidad. Oh, oh wow. thousands. Hey, this is a crap band, which is why it got off. That's right, it fell off. Don't uh, you know? All right, we'll get a close up of the band. Another Davidoff, an old school. Yep. Yep. No, it's no, really no, cool. No, no, to be honest, not a bad looking band. The black and gold. I, I, yes. I, 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 I can like see. It, but right. but uh, I think I dipped that one in tequila. Oh, oh. the Schwarzenegger so, method. Yeah. Well, Schwarzenegger, the Schwarzenegger says that he, I think he injects it, his cigars with tequila. He injects them. So when you smoke it, you get that tequila thing. I saw an article that he, he said, oh, I inject them. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So I thought that was pretty cool. That, no, he, that's how he does his, because his, I think he smokes punch. Um, if, if I read an article years ago, but I remember he was smoking punch. We invited Arnold to come on the show, but I think it's too early for him. You know, he's an older guy now. So it's five in the morning his time. So I don't think he can make it. So we invite him all um, the time. Is Sebastian, is Sebastian. Sebastian's yeah. asking questions. Is, yes. he, is, he, is he placated that I have smoked New World cigars? No, he just talked about the last Davidoff that he smoked. Blew his mind. I could go either way. It was a master selection from 2014, which was also released a couple of years ago. I don't know if you've tried. I have tried it, and I enjoyed it, yes. Sebastian's, Sebastian is at least not a snob, so he smokes other cigars. Oh, I found it. Found Here we go. The oh, worst Sebastian, cigar Sebastian was ever made. made. Now, somewhere on the planet, someone thinks this is an outstanding cigar because they obviously made it. Oh, yeah. the, Uber, the Uber Luxury is coming out. No, that's, the Uber Luxury, that, that band is not bad. Uh, this is the worst cigar made. I even put this on my Cigar Keep Ambassador's profile as the worst cigar I've ever smoked. Okay, what is it? Drum roll. And it is? <laughs> Any, anytime oh, you want to Oh, my do God. This. I, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is going to upset Stephen. No, it's not. Let me see it. Huh? Let me see it. Who? What is it? Mortal? I can't see it. CA or Mortal Coil? Oh shit! <laughs> oh, that's okay. I don't smoke that crap either. Did yeah, you see no, that we're band. Good. That was wrapped yeah. diagonally. Can you, can you turn it the other way the so we can actually read it? Because it's upside down. No, oh, it's wrong. It, it, it says it oh, both it ways. Is, it's in both ways. Oh, very uh, nice. Yeah, I've never smoked. And, and, and this is a certain type of writing. 
that yeah. it, it you can read it upside down. It's like what Dan Brown did uh, gotcha. in, in his books. You can read it that way, and you can read it. It says Arcana both ways. Yeah, yeah. I I only like one CAO cigar, and it's this one. It's this the Brazilian Amazon. This is the only Brazilian Amazon. They are the best. No, in CAO, the Brazilian Amazons are the best ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling. I'm telling you, CAO Brazilian Amazon is the best cigar that they make. I've tried their, they had their Sopranos, their Godfathers, like friends of mine would say, try them. Mm-hmm. And I tried them and I was like, they're all crap. And yeah, the right. Brazilian is my go-to cigar any day of the week, because I always know out of every 500 of them, I may get one or two that the, either the draw is hard or it's just not put together right. But for the most part, it's a consistent cigar and I like it. So, yeah. that, pro- so that segment of the program was pretty much dedicated to Sebastian, his question. <laughs> I hope the question has been answered. I hope we put this matter to bed. We will not yes. discuss New World Cigars ever again. There you we will go. also not he... discuss driving Toyotas ever again. Uh, right, and, right. And, should... and Sebastian, Sebastian say, Raza, you surprised me. Yes, he's sur- so that's yeah, a compliment. That's, he surprised that's, me. That's, that's, that's why I'm, that's, I, I saw that comment and, that, and I thought, is he placated? He's placated. <laughs> yes, he's good. Now Sebastian can enjoy the rest of his day in France. Going no, as Americans with his no, little. No, no, his... No, no, no. Sebastian has learned that he will not incite you or provocate you anymore in the future. On, this, oh, no, on no, today's that was good. show, that was good. Next that week. was we had a we had a little bit of a <laughs> venting a venting session there, where um, well actually the secrets out. Yes, I did I did smoke a lot of um, non Cuban cigars as Osman sure. would prefer to describe them. That's right. Yes. Um. Or the other way I would describe them is just shit cigars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, by the way, you know when you were saying in the eighties, um, you know, you were you're, you guys would look at cars and it would be like a Toyota or a BMW. When I was growing up, we all had the poster of the Lamborghini, the Ferraris. We had those. Those are the cars we all wanted to drive, not like a Toyota or a BMW, because BMW is just better mileage walking. Having, um, having said that, you have to yeah. work your way up, right? You, you right, you start, with, a, you start with a piece of crap, Maserati. Piece of crap. From a Maserati, you go for to a Lamborghini, and from a Lamborghini, you go to a Ferrari. And then after you, a Ferrari, you go to the newer cars. You start with a piece of crap that's really well engineered. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, I, oh, hold on, let's get a close-up of this band. The people on the podcast are going to, what the heck? Oh, like Richard Nixon. Why, why is Richard Nixon on a band? <laughs> it's Arturo Fuente, isn't it? Oh really? He looks young. He looks young. He looks young there. So no, they, no, they have history. They have uh, they have history. They they make great cigars. It's fine. They do. Fine, 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 fine. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring to a level of established brands. Right. Well, that's their opus. That's what they try to do with Opus X. Is they're trying to make it like this. Is they're trying to compete. Their Opus X is trying to compete with the Cuban market. Um, and I've, and the, I would say the, the Opus X that I like out of all the Opus X, not the God of Fires, they're okay. And all these other ones are the ones, the Opus X that come in the black tubes. I love those. They're very good. And every now and then there's a guy, um, that will send me a note that says they have some in stock and I will get those. Cause those I actually enjoy. And they're to me worth, you know, the $20 a stick that I pay or whatever it is. So. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Is it for your patience? That's cute. Sebastian's thanking you. Um, for taking him on a guided tour. So there Je you go. Oh, look at you speaking Polish. That's very good. I'm very impressed. <laughs> so, 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 la langue française. Sebastian, we would like to thank you for your patience. That's right. Thank you for putting up with the, the ADHD princess. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we, we, we appreciate that. So, yes, you want, I know you want to say something. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. It's you know, dead air does dead air doesn't pay the bill. Okay. So anyway, uh, coming go. to the coming to the next thing. Yes. Uh, the next the, thing. Yeah, the next thing. What are we actually thinking of the next week's topic in addition to you showing the pre embargo Yes. Which I'm open. What well, the fans want to hear? Rizzo, what Did do you we want ever to talk do about? anything on age cigars? Did we ever do anything on age cigars and what is the difference? I, I, I think we've touched on it, but we haven't done a show. Yeah. The thing is, the, uh, about the aging of cigars, and I and I think if memory and Alzheimer's uh, and alcohol, on side, yeah. we did talk about the fact that we would eventually cover that in an episode. What is the yeah. whole point of aging cigars? Does it work? Does it not work? What are the right. benefits of it? What do you actually get out of it? 
Yeah. Um, I, I, to be honest, I think it's a very simple answer. What you do is you get a smoother cigar where you can taste the notes of the cigar better. I believe I agree with that's that. what it is. But more than that, I think it's nostalgia. I really think all of this is about nostalgia. It's about hitting blends that don't necessarily exist in the same way as they do now. It's also the value added um, anticipation of a cigar that hasn't been smoked for 20 years or 30 right. years and seeing what it tastes like now. And some people say it loses its strength. There you go. I did. I summarized it. I know. Well, we still do the show if you want. Um, but I, 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 I like, I like an aged cigar. There's something, there's something good to it. I think it's a smooth. To your point, it is a smoother smoke. Like if I get cigars and I'm like, when I get a new box of CAOs, they go into my. I won't see you for three months, humidor, because I don't smoke them right away because they still need to be aged. Even if I get, you know, the the Padron 1926 that's you, been aged you, for 10 years, I still want to age my cigars before I smoke them because I want the smoothness of it. I don't want that harsh, rough boom. You, you actually get a special humidor for uh, aging New World cigars. It's called a dustbin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. It goes into the dustbin, and then I, I we go from there. Yeah, and so and it comes with a pedal. You press the is. pedal, the top opens, you just insert. Yeah, um, Stephen, Stephen, would you like to read the last comment? Yes, Sebastian <laughs> said, stick to English, good French. <laughs> Thank you all for uh, for the answers, guys. So, Sebastian, of course, that's what we're here for. Um, and we enjoy it. We love our fans. Um, don't believe what you, you read off the air. Anyway, no, but no, it's good. I'm glad we can answer questions for people and stuff. But yeah, we could talk more about aging next week because I know some people, Let's age, do that. like I... I have friends that age cigars, like they get them and it's like they put the date on the box that goes in the humidor and they won't touch them for a year or more. And I'm like three months, um, but I have so much, it doesn't matter. They can sit there for a while or in your case, the dustbin. But I, yeah, we should talk about that because I think Cigar 101 for people that are just getting into it are probably like, hey, age cigars, I want to smoke it the minute I get it. And we just probably, we should give them more than the, the little scenario of why and what it does and, you know, the chemicals. Absolutely you know, what it'll do and, and what... And, and so, perhaps yeah. also, Usman can talk about the benefits of aging some cigars and not aging other cigars. I hear that some cigars yeah, do go. benefit from aging and some just don't yes. benefit from aging at all. Agreed, agreed. So let's... let's He's talking about non-Cubans. It's non-Cubans, yeah. you figure you can just smoke the minute you get them and the Cubans you should age for 100 years. And I believe, that. I believe yeah. this is for me, <laughs> there are some cigars that taste terrible brand new. And yes. after the aging, they're ready to, you know, just like unripe and ripe fruit. You wouldn't eat unripe fruit. And right. um, you wait for a certain period of time for it to get into its sweetness level or its sugariness level, if whatever you want. It just And the oils are retained, but the, the, the acerbic nature of the cigar is gone. The volatility is gone. So you get right. sort of a creamy draw, that kind of thing. Those kind yeah, of, I, yeah, that'll be a fun show next week. I look forward words. to it. Yeah, congratulations, gentlemen. Well, as always, cigars. I can see him. Yeah, I know I he's, he's Tom Tom right now. Poor Christian, yeah. it's his day off. Listen, <laughs> give him, give him, they can order on Monday. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> before Tom Tom, Tom you used to order cigars from somewhere else in London. That's my recollection, Osman. Yes, uh, mostly number six. No, no, before uh, no, sort of between number six and Tom Tom, there you were ordering, but you don't. James there. J. Fox. James J. Fox. No, no, it's <laughs> slightly worse. <laughs> I know where you're going. I know where, where you're going. going. Where am I going? I don't know where I'm going. Where are you going? Oh, uh, uh, seagulls. Mm, no, it Sausage. wasn't that one. It wasn't, it wasn't that one. Uh, was it? Uh, I think you're quite picky Havana, and choosy Havana, about where your cigars Havana, are from now. Havana, Havana Cigar Exchange? Are you it may have been something like that. Yes, yeah, something something like... With, oh, uh, my God. Right. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen, we'll tell you the joke. We'll tell you the joke after. It's no joke. Yeah, it's when, we, when, we show, when we when we when we end the show, <laughs> gentlemen, as always, it has been a pleasure. To the fans, thank you for watching. All the questions seen, what we've answered, all from Sebastian. Um, for the other fans that are watching that didn't ask, feel free to ask. We will be back next Saturday, same bat channel, same time. Depending on where you are, you'll have to figure it out. And we we broadcast this show about and two hours after we do it live. So if you missed any of it, you can go and catch it there. And we want to thank everybody for uh, for watching and listening. And don't forget to subscribe and like. And that's it. Anything else, gentlemen? Or are we all good? We're all good. Reza, we're expecting that you're going to stay for a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Try not to vlog yourself out like usual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
with that, everyone, cheers, everyone, everybody. Cheers, bye-bye. Have a great weekend. <laughs> bye-bye.